Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to my reading journey. Hope you're all doing great and today we're gonna continue with the third part of Blackjack Bar Gainer. So let's do this. Gory watched his sorry Gory watched this solemn equipage equipage as it drove to his door with only faint interest. But when the Lang driver, Lang driver, rubbed the reins about his whip, awkwardly descended and stepped into the office, he rose unsteadily to receive him, recognizing Pike Cavery, Garvey, sorry, Pike Garvey, the new, the transformed, the recently civilized. The mo mountainer took the chair Gory offered him. They who cast doubts about Garvey's soundness of mind had a strong witness in the man's countenance. His face was too long, a dull saff saffron in the hue. In, in hu dual saffron in hue and immobile as a status. Pale blue unwinking round eyes without lashes added to the to the singularity of his gruesome visage. Gruesome visage. Gary was at loss to account for for the for the visit. <clears throat> Everything all right at Laurel, Mr. Ga Garvey? He inquired. Everything all right, sir. And mighty pleased in Mrs. Garvey and me with the property. Mrs. Garvey likes your your old place, and she likes the neighborhood. Society is what you love she wants and she's getting of it the rogers the rogers the roger says the roger says the hap goods the prats and the toys have been to see mrs Garvey, and she have had meals to most of their houses. The best folks have asked her to different kinds of doings. I sensei Miss Mr. Gory that such things suits me. For me giving them their Garvey's huge yellow glued hand flourished in the direction of the mountains. Flowers were a uh, I blow mo mo most blow most the world honeybees and the bra bars, but that ain't what I come for to say, Mister Gory. That's something you got. What me and Missus Garvey's wants to buy. <coughs> buy. A hold Corey from me. Then he laughed harshly. Harshly. I reckon you are mistaken about that. I reckon you are mistaken about that. I sold out to you as you, as you yourself expressed it. Lock, stock and borrow. There isn't even a ram, ramrod left to sell ram ramrod we've got it and we those wanted take the money says mrs garvey and buy it far and square gory shook his head the cowboys bear He said, 
cowboy bear. The cowboy bear. Whereas pursued the mountain, undeflected from his object, a hip. We was poor as possums, and now we could have folks to dinner every day. We've been recognized, Mrs. Gary Gar Garis says, by the best society. But there, but there is something we need, and we ain't got. She says it ought to be put in the wentry of the sale, but it taint her, taint her. Take the money then, says she, and buy it far and square, far and square, far and square. Nobody orders it, man. Out with that, said Corey, his racked nerves growing impatient. Racked nerves. <coughs> Gary threw his slosh, slosh head upon the table and leaned forward, fixing his unblinking eyes upon Gorius. There is old food. There is a, a old food, he said dis distinctly and slowly. Distinctly. Twin, twin, you, twin your earns and the Coltrane, Coltrane, trains, Coltrane's, Coltrane's. Gory frowned ominously. Frowned ominously. To speak of his third to a fairest is a serious breach. Serious breach. Serious breach of, of, a ma of the mountain etiquette. The man from back. Yan, the man from back Yan knew it as well as the Lord did. Now fans, he went on, but purely in the way of business. Mrs. Gary have studied all about herds, most of the quality folks in the mountains that have them. The saddles and a golf go forth. The ranking rankings and the boys, the sellers and the galleries have all been serving of foods from twenty to a hundred year. The last man to drop was when your uncle Jed Paisley Gory joined Call Code and shot shot Len Caltrain from from the bench. Mrs. Gary uh, and me we come from the poor white trash. <coughs> Nobody won't pick a foot with the urns, no more with the family or three road. Three, three thoughts. Quality people everywhere, says Miss Garry, has thoughts. We ain't quality, but we're born into, born into it. Ed, as far as we can. Take the money then, says Miss Garry, and buy Mr. Gorey's food. Far and far. The squirrel hunted straighten, straighten. A lag, a lag half across the room, drew a roll of bills from his pocket and threw them on the table. There are two other doors, Mr. Gory. What you would call a fire price from food that been lowered to run down like your your own half. That's only you left to turn on your side of it and you'll make mighty poor killing. I'll take it uh, off your hands, and I'll send Miss Gary 
up in one quality. That's the money. The little roll of currency on the table slowly untwisted itself. Riffing, 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 and jumping as it folds relaxed. In the silence that followed Gary's last pitch and the rattling of the poker chips in the courthouse could be plainly heard. Very new, Daddy. Sheriff had just won a pot for the subdued whoop with which he always greeted a victory floated across the square upon the crinkly head waves. Beds of moisture beds of moisture stood on Gory's brow, stooping stooping, he drew the wicker covered damijon from under the table damijon and filled a tumbler from it. All right, guys, we're going to continue tomorrow with the next part. Thank you for joining me today. See you. Bye.